Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Marcus Nataro. I'm the winemaker here at Stag's Eve Wine Cellars, and it's a pleasure to be with you this evening. Uh, right behind me here, I'm coming to you from the Fay Outlook and Visitor Center here at Stag's Eve Wine Cellars. Behind me is the historic Fay Vineyard, and of course the Stag's Eve Palisades, which gave our area uh, its name. Stag's Eve Wine Cellars, you know, has a wonderful history here in the Napa Valley. It actually starts with this vineyard right behind me. Uh, our founder, uh, Warren Vernarski. Uh, paid a visit in 1969 to a man named Nathan Fay. Mr. Fay had planted this vineyard here in originally in 1961 and as Warren puts it when he went to taste his homemade wine it was as Mr. Fay popped open the bottle it was the aromatics alone uh, that captivated him it was the quality and style of Cabernet that he was looking for in the Napa Valley and there just so happened to have been 40 acres of land for sale directly to the south of us adjacent to the Fay vineyard it was mostly planted to really were prunes and other crops at that point. And remember, at that, this time in the, in the 70s, the Napa Valley was not really the winery Disneyland uh, that it is today. I mean, prunes were actually like more valuable than wine grapes. And really, the Napa Valley was still recovering from that great American idea called prohibition. I mean, there was only like 50 wineries here in the valley. And if you look at the whole world of wine, it was really Burgundy and Bordeaux were really the only two places that were thought of for making uh, high quality wine. Uh, but Mr. Wernarski purchased his 40 acres of land, planted Cabernet Sauvignon there in 1970. Uh, so we're actually celebrating our 50th anniversary this year. And if you fast forward a few years to 1976 and you go over to Paris, France, there was a British wine merchant named Stephen Spurrier who had visited the Napa Valley along with his partner and tasted our wines and thought he could sell our wines to Brits and Americans that were living and working around his wine shop and visiting his wine shop. So he organized a tasting, brought in all these renowned French judges uh, for a tasting of the finest wines of Burgundy and Bordeaux, along with this place, this upstart place called the Napa Valley. Uh, the tasting was all done blind. And uh, when the results were revealed, it was the 1973 Chateau Montalena Chardonnay uh, that had won in the Burgundy category. Chateau Montalena, of course, is one of our neighbors up, up to the north of us in Calistoga. Uh, and then when they did the Bordeaux tasting, it was the 1973 Stag's Leap Wine Cellars SLV, or Stag's Leap Vineyard Cabernet Sauvignon that had beaten the best of Bordeaux. Um, so with this result, there was only one journalist in the room. And Mr. Spirit had invited a whole bunch of folks to cover this event. None of them showed. At the last second, he called over to Time Magazine, who sent over a man named George Tabor. And uh, Mr. Tabor wrote this little article called The Judgment of Paris that appeared on page like 56 of Time Magazine. But that little article with this great American victory in wine got sparked, uh, sparked news around the world. It was like the going viral of the 70s. Different news organizations uh, picked it up. And again, for folks that were living here in Napa Valley, I mean, this was that glass ceiling moment. It really justified what they felt. It really provided direction. It's like, yes, look, we all know great wines are made in Burgundy and Bordeaux, but the Napa Valley can compete with Chardonnay and Cabernet Sauvignon as well. I mean, it's a huge moment in our history, huge moment uh, in the Napa Valley. Uh, hopefully you folks will be able to come visit us down here in the Stags Leaf District soon. We've got a, a bottle of the 73 on display along with some of the original uh, uh, tasting notes and the score sheets. Um, and and uh, I mean, it's a special thing. We still have about a little under a case of that wine uh, that we still have under lock and key here and it is still tasting uh, quite nice. Uh, but for tonight, uh, you folks have three of our wines. Uh, we're going to start out with our Caria, uh, Napa Valley Chardonnay. Uh, Caria is a Greek word uh, meaning graceful, and that's going to fit with the style of this wine. So the Napa Valley is a very small place. You know, it's only about 30 miles long by five miles wide, but there's really big variations in temperature. Um, and it, and, it, and uh, so that really has a big influence over what varieties grow well where. And in fact, particularly with Cabernet Sauvignon, you have just this incredible diversity in terms of character uh, and style. But Chardonnay, that grows better down on the southern part of the valley. So closer to San Pablo Bay, this is a big uh, body of seawater, of course, um, that what happens in the early afternoons is you have the hot air rising in the east of us over in the Sacramento Valley, starts to pull in fog and these cool sea breezes 
off the Pacific Ocean through the Golden Gate Bridge up across San Pablo Bay, Bay and then it starts to infiltrate our valley from the south to the north. Um, and then again, the next morning then, the, the sun, when the sun comes out, it starts to burn things off as it goes back out to the coast from the north to the south. So the southern part of the valley then tends to be cooler and that's where Chardonnay grows best. So we source Chardonnay really from four key areas down in Carneros, which is right next to the bay. That's the coolest area. Uh, we grow some grapes in the Oak Knoll district, which is probably about two miles south of where I am here in Stag's Leap, but right next to the Napa River. So it's a little bit more nutritious soil there. And the characters of Chardonnay there have more of your classic apples and melons. Um, we also source Chardonnay from up on Atlas Peak. Atlas Peak is a mountain area. It's actually right up above me. You can't quite see uh, where, from our vantage point, but it's at about 1,500 feet of elevation. So the soil is there a little more volcanic. Uh, you actually are above the fog, so the, so the grapes there see a little bit more sun but it doesn't get quite as hot because of the elevation and stays a little bit warmer. So those Chardonnays have a little more of a lemon-lime character and a little bit of a richer feel. And then to balance that out, uh, our founder Warren Vernarski still owns a vineyard down in the Coombsville Appalachian called Arcadia. Uh, so this is again coming from the cooler part. And this Chardonnay is very unique. In fact, we do a little bit of a single vineyard which we sell here uh, at the wine shop. It has more of a honeysuckle and floral character and like white peach and then really nice and bright and, and lively uh, acidity. Um, so those are really the, the different areas. You know, I, I like to produce wines that have a lot of complexity. That's why I like to use these different sides of Chardonnay, different areas, and hopefully you can pick up some of those characters uh, that I'm describing in the wine. Uh, I do ferment most of it in barrel, uh, but only about a third in new French oak. So you might get just a kiss of that, of that vanilla or that clove, that spicy character coming from the wood, but hopefully it's not uh, too over the top um, in terms of what's dominating that wine. It has a, it's a fairly, has a little bit of a creamy te texture, um, uh, but also a lot of nice bright acidity. So it makes it a very food friendly wine. You know, one of my favorite go-to wines with Caria Chardonnay is actually with scallops. And I believe that's what you guys are having tonight with your first course. So that should be a, just a fantastic pairing. And I hope you enjoy it. The second wine you guys are gonna have is called the, our Hands of Time uh, Red Blend. You know, after that Paris tasting, after that victory, you know, everybody wanted to come to Stag's Leap Wine Cellars and work here. They wanted to learn like what was the secret, you know, to that SLV. And then people, so a lot of folks came here and worked, whether it was a couple harvests as an intern or as a winemaker or in the vineyards or a viticulturist, and then went on to make big names for themselves uh, here in the Napa Valley. It's about 15 years ago or so, um, uh, our founder, he invited a lot of these folks back um, and got a limestone handprint along with the different vintages that they had been here at Stag's Leap Wine Cellars. And then these hands then are displayed uh, on our historic cellar wall called the Hands of Time. You know, Warren took a great pride in mentoring people and there's some fantastic winemakers and viticulturists whose handprints are up on the wall there that have spent some time uh, working here at Stag's Leap Wine Cellar. So this wine is really dedicated to them. Um, it is a red blend, so it's based primarily on Cabernet Sauvignon, of course, uh, but I'll use, depending on the different vintages, I may use a little bit of Merlot to soften it, a little Malbec to add a little bit of spice, or Petit Verdot to elevate the, the uh, aromatics and add just a little bit of a floral character to it. Um, it's really meant to be kind of like that first red wine of the night. It's meant to be softer, uh, more silky, just really lush and full of fruit. I don't throw a whole lot of new oak at it. I want it to really to shine through that great, beautiful fruit um, characters that we get, particularly from our red wines uh, here in the Napa Valley. And then the th third wine that you're gonna have um, is our Artemis Cabernet Sauvignon. So Artemis is the goddess of the hunt. Uh, she's the protector of the stag, so obviously very appropriate uh, for our label. Um, but also, you know, with the, with the characters of the wine too. You know, Artemis is meant to be a hunt around Napa Valley. I kind of described when I was talking about the Caria Chardonnay that most of the Chardonnays come from the cooler parts of the valley uh, in the south. Well, Cabernet Sauvignon is really interesting here in Napa. You know, not only does is it depend on where it is grown in the valley, whether it's in the cooler part or the warmer part, but the different soil types have a huge impact over how things grow and the characteristics that you get in Cabernet Sauvignon. And over two thirds of the different soil types in the world are found here in our tiny little valley. So um, in Artemis then, I want it to reflect the vintage, right? This is what Cabernet Sauvignon is like 
for the vintage for Napa Valley. So we'll for sure be using some Cabernet Sauvignon grown right behind me here in Stag's Leap. Our area tends to give us Cabernets that have this, what I call a soft power. They're wonderfully complex blinds. They have nice ripe flavors of Cabernet Sauvignon, but they don't tend to be too over the top uh, or too heavy. We'll also source Cabernet from mountain areas like, again, way up above us on Atlas Peak. And Cabernet is grown up there at elevation in that red volcanic soil. They have more of a sage and a huckleberry type uh, aroma, aroma and character and bigger, more richer tannins and bigger body. Um, we'll also look for Cabernet in the northern part of the valley. So where the southern part closer to the bay is considered cooler as you get into the northern part of Napa Valley. That's where it's a, it is a bit warmer up there. There's more sunlight. Um, soils are a little bit richer. So Cabernets there take on more of a darker fruit character like black cherry, uh, blackberry, and the tannins, the, the, the texture of the wines are velvety, but they're rich and soft. And then to balance out that then, we'll source a little bit of Cabernet from the southern part of the valley, again, down at Arcadia and at the Wooden, Wooden Valley. And where Cabernet is grown in a cooler area, it takes on more red fruit. So more of like uh, Bing cherry, uh, more berry, like boysenberry or raspberry and tea type characters uh, and nice bright, uh, bright acidity to it. So those are the different areas and again, the different characters to look for in Artemis. Um, Artemis is primarily Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, again, I might blend in just a little bit of Merlot or a little bit of Malbec just to kind of, to, you know, just to soften it out to get that nice smooth balance that I'm looking for in that wine. Uh, but it is primarily uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and should also go great um, with your last course. So again, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you. Um, I really hope you enjoy the wines and the pairings. And uh, we look forward to seeing you here at Stag's Wine Cellars uh, as soon as you can safely do so. So cheers. Thanks again.